Hi everybody, it's Don and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, I thought with the rising cost of cruises out there and the prices going through the roof for everything, flights, hotels, cruises, I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I should talk about some things that people kind of waste their money on or money saving ideas that will just save you some money on your cruise and maybe make you rethink some of the things that you've been doing in the past. First off, the number one tip for saving money is often you can book things ahead of time on your cruise, like spa treatment, specialty dining, shore excursions, and often you will find sales ahead of time. For instance, on Labor Day or on Memorial Day weekend or something along those lines, Christmas, Valentine's Day, you will see specials, not necessarily on the prices of the cruise, but on things like 25% off special spa packages on Mother's Day or 20% off specialty dining before you book your cruise. It's much better to book it ahead of time, save that money because when you get on the cruise, chances are you're paying full price. Tip number two, however, there are some sales you can get on that first day when you get on the ship. You can sometimes still get discounted prices for drink packages, things like that if you haven't pre-purchased it. But another thing is, if you ever wanted to do a specialty dining, check day one when you get on the ship. Hey, can I, what is the price today? Many of the specialty dinings never have people book on the first day because they don't know if they're gonna have their luggage on time when they get to their stateroom. They don't wanna dress up on the first night. It's a tiring day. They just wanna relax. Well, that's a good day that they offer many of them sometimes discounts up to 40% on some specialty dining. Another thing I like to do before I even get to the ship is prepare for my ship travel. And there are certain things that I like to have when I'm on a cruise for my own personal enjoyment, and that is snacks and my drinks. So some people like to bring a bottle of wine when you're allowed to do so on a cruise ship. Many people are allowed to bring a bottle of wine per person. Myself, I usually like to bring a case of soda, a 12 pack of cans of soda of my favorite soda so that I can keep in my stateroom, put it in the mini fridge and I have during my cruise because often mine is not sold on the cruise ships. Not only that, I'd rather pay $5 for a case of 12 instead of $5 per can that I paid in the past on some cruise ships. So yeah, I'm saving 12 times the amount of money uh, by bringing my own soda. Another thing you should also think of is snacks. They sell snacks on the cruise ships, absolutely. But they're usually at four times the cost that you could buy them in the grocery store. And so a regular bag of chips, and they, they might not have the kind of chips that you want to eat. So it never hurts to shove one or two bags of chips into your suitcase before you head on your cruise. Another tip I like to do is I prepay my gratuities the minute I book my cruise, I book it into my fare right away. And the reason I do that is, if you've been following me for any length of time, you know gratuities go up over time. And I've seen cruise lines increase their gratuity prices twice in the same year. But if you've locked it in and you've you know, set it for your price, you don't have to pay the increased fare. Now I'm all for tipping crew members and everything, but that's one of the things that, hey, I've already paid my gratuities because I also like to leave tips when I'm on the ship for my cabin steward, etc. Speaking of tipping, be careful not to double tip. Many cruise lines automatically charge you. For instance, you have a drink, but you, you go up to the bar, you order a drink, I uh, like a rum and coke, please. They serve you the rum and coke, and when you check your bill, there's an 18 to 22% gratuity already charged to you. And then you throw on a $1, $2, $3 tip to the individual bartender, it adds up. Or you don't even realize there's a tip on there and you sign a tip onto the bill because some cruise lines still make you pay by signing the receipt. Be careful you're not double tipping. It's nice to tip when it's deserved and you think somebody went above and beyond, but if they're already getting paid 22%, I think that's a pretty darn good gratuity to begin with. This next tip is for all you parents out there. Make sure your kids 
don't have access to something that may cost you a lot of money going forward. One of the things a lot of parents get surprised with is kids, if they have a key card, can go into the ship's arcade and play using the key card in a lot of cruise lines. Well, that's pay per play. <laughs> you're paying for every game they play and all of a sudden you notice your hey, your kids have been gone for a while. They're uh, playing some arcade, I guess. You thought they were just paying for the time or they were free. No, no. And I've seen bills on some cruise passengers upwards of six and seven hundred dollars because they thought the kids were playing for free in the arcade. The arcades are not free. You have to pay for it. Speaking of not free, some cruise lines have movies on the TV in your stateroom that you can watch for free. Others, it's pay for view. Make sure your kids do not have access to pay for view movies unless you want them to watch those movies. Again, I've seen bills in the $100 range for kids who watched Frozen over and over and over on their cruise ship. <laughs> You, you, it's nice to have a babysitter in your stateroom, I guess, but you don't want to have to pay $100 to $200 for the privilege. Okay, let's talk about drink packages. If you get a really good deal on something that's all included, including like your Wi-Fi, your gratuities, your drink package, it can be worthwhile having a drink package because you don't have to drink the entire amount to make up your money because it also covers other things. But if you're just buying a drink package, check how much that drink package is. In some cases, it's over $100 a day per person. And if you're someone who has one or two drinks, a day, well, then you're paying for no reason. If you were to pay as you go, you would save an awful lot of money. In some cases, 70 to 75% of what that drink package actually would cost you. Another thing people often think is wrong, the drink of the day. People often think, oh, I'm gonna take the drink of the day every day because the drink of the day is a sale. It's not a sale. It's just a drink of a day. Most of the time, it's even more expensive than the average drink. And a lot of the times, the drink of the day isn't included in the minimum drink package. And people actually end up paying full price for a drink that they thought they were getting a deal on. Another money saving tip that I find, especially in the past year or so, is to try and book your flights as early as possible and lock in that price because I, I'm one of those people who like to look for sales and keep an eye out for sales, etc. But right now I'm seeing the planes as they fill up, those prices start skyrocketing. And a perfect example of this is when I was heading to the Sky Princess earlier in the year, I was getting ready to sell. When I booked my flights, I paid a certain price. And then I said, you know what? I, I'm gonna have to, I wanna stay longer or I might wanna do another cruise while I'm there. How much would it be now if I just wanted to refare and come back on a later date? And I would have to pay the regular fare. Well, the regular fare had doubled, literally doubled. So I would have been paying thousands of dollars more had I waited to book those flights. So yeah, book those flights as soon as possible. Speaking of flights in the way, one of the things they ask you on a plane to do is put your plane on airplane mode when you're flying. Well, guess what? When you're on a cruise ship, you should be doing exactly the same thing so you don't incur any roaming charges from your cell phone provider because we, I've covered this story numerous times. Parents surprised. I was surprised. Why didn't the cruise line tell me to go on airplane mode? Well, Nobody should tell you to go on airplane mode. I'm telling you to go on airplane mode. Save your money. You don't want to get home and have a $2,000 roaming charge bill coming back from your cruise because you went out into the ocean and you hit the satellites and you started getting those charges. It can be astronomical. So yes, airplane mode every single time. Some of the things you should always avoid purchasing or using when you're on a cruise ship. Number one, try and avoid the ATM because there's huge charges at an ATM. It's like when you go out to a club, when you if, you if you didn't bring enough money with you and you go to an ATM, their ATM charges you an absorbent amount in percentage. -wise. I've seen 20, 25%. Same on cruise lines. Often you go, I just wanna take $50 out. Well, the charge to take $50 out of the ATM was $10. 
That's a 20% charge. So was it worth it? Avoid the ATM at all costs. And not only that, avoid buying the little things on a cruise ship like toothpaste, sunscreen, razor blades, aspirin, bug repellent, anything like that that you can get much cheaper at your pharmacy at home, bring it with you because if you have to pay for it on a cruise ship, you're going to be paying at least triple the price of what you would have paid at home. So yeah, that little bottle of sunscreen can end up costing you way more. I've seen people go in and buy toothpaste, razor blades, some shaving cream, sunscreen, and bug repellent. Five things over a hundred dollars. So yeah, don't be surprised. Buy those things ahead of time so you're not caught off guard by those prices on the cruise ships. Another thing you could keep an eye on is shore excursions. Now, in many cases, shore excursions are worthwhile going through the cruise line. For instance, they guarantee to get you back on the ship in most cases, but not all cases. For instance, if you book a hop on hop off bus through the cruise line, First of all, you're usually paying more than you would have paid if you just got off the ship, walked over to the kiosk and bought the hop on hop off bus ticket anyway. Not only that, but because of the nature of a hop on hop off bus, it's not an escorted tour. It's not a narrated tour. They don't guarantee you getting back to the ship even though you bought it through the cruise line. And it will state that on your receipt when you're booking that. So be careful of that if you think, oh, I'll pay the extra $25 a person for the hop on hop off bus because I know I can get back on the ship if I'm late getting back on. It doesn't work out that way on those types of excursions. And that can cost you thousands of dollars to get back to the cruise ship if they end up leaving you in port. Cause you thought, ah, I'll spend a little time looking around the Eiffel Tower and then I'll, I'll take that hop off back to the excursion place and oh, oh it's gone. <laughs> so yeah, please be aware of that. Not all shore excursions are created equal. Also, I've seen excursions where it'll say, hey, private beach, etc. you get to go to this private area and it costs this much money. Oh, well, that sounds nice and everything and you go and really, you're not really a private beach. You're just dropped off at the beach and they have this roped off area, but they're every cruise line in the world that's in port that day is using that area and it's just as crowded as the rest of the beach. That if you would have took a taxi for like $6, get to the beach, you would have been in the exact same area that they let you off at, at $70 a person. So yeah. Keep an eye on those shore excursions. Some are definitely worthwhile, but some can definitely just cost you money for no reason. Speaking of while you're on shore excursions, don't be afraid to barter. Don't be afraid to negotiate prices. For instance, when I was in Cartagena, I got my Cartagena hat back there. You can see it right there on my hat rack. And when I first started negotiating with the person, they wanted 40 some dollars US for that hat. And I went, no, no, and, and then they followed me everywhere I went along with everybody else that was trying to sell me something because they saw that maybe I was interested in something. So I had like 12 guys around me and finally I got that hat down to around $5. Big difference from $40 to $5 and you can find that in almost every cruise port, especially the little small kiosks and the little desks that they have around the area. Don't be afraid to negotiate. You could really save some money. In some cases, you can save eight times the amount of money that if you just say, oh, it's $40, here you go. Also, you have to do this on your cruise. Check your onboard account a few times during your trip. You want to make sure you're not being accidentally charged for anything that might be not yours. I've seen many cases where people were in the vicinity and they said, they just said, oh, I got your name, sir. And, but it was somebody else's name. And next thing you know, you're being charged for a drink. You're being charged for a bottle of wine. You're being charged for specialty dining because somebody gave, thought they heard a stateroom number wrong or incorrect. Well, if you check your account, you can see what's there and what's not, and you can go down and have it corrected. Do it during the cruise. Don't wait till that last day, even though if you haven't done it, do it on the last day because the last day you're going to have those huge lineups, the huge lineups and guest services. 
better to keep checking during the week and if something pops up, then you can go when it's not so busy. So yeah, always check your account for something that they're charging you for that you just didn't do. Finally, I wanna give this little tip is to always be aware of the upsell. And you gotta be careful. On a recent cruise I was on, I was having dinner with some friends and we were enjoying a really fine dining experience. We were at a specialty restaurant and I made a comment of, oh, is this person's wine, a celebrity, on this ship? And they said, oh, yes it is, sir. Next thing, and the next thing you know, I had a waiter coming up to me and showing me this lovely bottle of wine. Now, I'm not a wine connoisseur. I know nothing about wines, basically, that they're red and white. That's what I know. <laughs> I trust the experts at the, on the cruise ships to tell me what wine goes best with what I'm eating. That's how inexperienced I am. I won't order wine unless I'm at a specialty restaurant, I'm, I'm with friends, etc. I'd rather just have a Coke or a soft drink. I'm, I'm easy that way. But this bottle of wine that the person's showing me, and saying, oh, this is very interesting. You have to, you'd, you'd love the flavor, the bouquet of the wine, et cetera, sir. And I was like, oh, that, that, yeah, okay, great. I, again, know nothing about this. And I just happened to glance down at the price of that bottle of wine. Now, keep in mind, the bottle of wines that they were being served at this table were between $30 to $40 at the specialty restaurant by the glass. Not That was for the bottle, but we were obviously getting glasses. This bottle of wine was $1,700 for the bottle of wine. Had I not noticed the price and I would have just said to them, oh, you know what? That sounds really good. Yes, please. Uh, I'll, I'll buy that for the table. Well, I just bought a $1,700 bottle of wine for the table. I don't know about you. I'm not spending $1,700 on a bottle of wine. So be careful of those upsell offers. Sometimes they're bit, this is how much it costs her and everything. And sometimes you might not even think about it. They didn't even make it because they're assuming you know what you're talking about. And you say, oh yeah, I'll take that. They're not, oh, but sir, it's $1,700. They're not gonna do that because they don't wanna insult you thinking by saying, oh, sir, are you sure you can afford this? No, they're not gonna say that. And now it's on you. The price is there in the menu. There's the bottle of wine. It's up to you to look. So be careful of those situations where, yeah, I almost ended up buying a $1,700 bottle of wine. And I'm really glad I didn't. And okay, my final tip for everybody, because it's the final tip, I'm gonna tell you the final payment tip is to always check your, the current price for the stateroom you're in with what you have. So many people will message me and saying, hey, I, I can get this cabin now at this price. And I go, oh, at that price. Well, first of all, it's a guaranteed cabin. Second of all, it's in a different part of the ship on a different floor. Thirdly, it doesn't include the drink package that you asked for. It doesn't include gratuities. It doesn't include the Wi-Fi that you asked for. It doesn't include all this other stuff that you asked for. Once you start adding that, it ended up being more. So check to make sure you're comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges as opposed to the other way around. But sometimes you do get lucky and the price has gone down. And if you're booking this on your own or you have an agent, ask your agent if, if the price has gone down before you make that final payment because you want to save as much money and they can refare it for you at the new price. Sometimes it's worth it. I've seen people lose $200 in onboard credits but they save $1,300 on the cruise. Which would you rather? I'd rather the $1,100 in my pocket. So yeah, before you make your final payment, just do a quick search, make sure it's the right cabin, the same thing that you're looking at, and maybe you might save some money right there. So there you go, that's about 19 or so tips for saving money, maybe waste some money that you might not have thought of or that you did think of or you got caught doing. Have you ended up doing any of these things? Have you ended up buying snacks on a cruise ship, forgot your razor blade and had to buy them on a cruise ship, paid for a shore excursion that you said, hey, you know what? I could have took a $5 taxi and we all would have got here for $5 as opposed to paying $40 each to get to the same location. We've all done it, but let me know in the comments down below. And until next time, I hope you appreciate this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Want to see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world? Hit that subscribe button. Until next time, 
Have yourself a safe and a great vacation.